Welcome to Special Stage Extra. I'm glad you can join us. I'm at Western Park, and later in the show, we'll have all the action from the Paintworks Agbo stages, as you can see, underway behind me. But right now, we'll head to Wigan for the Roskirk stages, where we've got action from the juniors and the main event for you. The Roskirk stages marks the start of the new Formula 1000 Junior Rally Championship season. Charlie Barlow and Tom Hutchings make an ideal start to the event, something which Charlie has struggled with previously, passing the midway point in the event in the lead. Zach Hughes and Chris Evans were the ones chasing them down, but not quite on their heels just yet. They lie second in the results and losing a small amount of time each stage. It will be a similar story though for Seb Perez and Philip Hall in third. They end stage four with six seconds to Hughes in front, but by four stages later, the pair would have a 21 second deficit. They would need to tidy things up for the remaining stages if they wanted anything more from this event. Matthew Davies and Mark Crisp make a small move up the results in the middle stages. They start the day in fifth, climbing a place to fourth by the end of stage eight, just nine seconds behind Perez. Ed Fossey and Sean Humphreys were another crew to gain a few places in the middle stages. They start the day in seventh, not helped with a spin on the opening stage on cold tyres. They'd move up to fifth by the end of stage eight. Jersey-based Fossey making the 900 mile round trip to be here this weekend. Tommy Meadows and Ian Oakey would also suffer from a spin early on in the event to put them in eighth after the morning stages. But the times were good on these clean stages and the pair climb up the results to sixth place for now. Finley Retson and Phil Sandham unfortunately lose a place in these stages. They start the day in sixth, but that soon changes into seventh by the end of the next few stages. Will Butler and Tom Wood unfortunately suffer a little more. They drop down from a fantastic fourth place start down into eighth place now, 15 seconds behind Retson. And for Conor O'Brien and Gareth Short, it would be a place gained. Tenth to start the day and moving up to ninth after eight stages. Ed Fossey's 900 mile round trip from Jersey showed some dedication. But for Umberto Ocanero, competing on the championship this season meant flying in from Italy for each round. He and co-driver Rob Gillam start the day off with 13th place, moving in to round out the top 10 going into the final stages of the day. So after eight stages of competition, the results for the juniors are looking like this. Onto the final stages of the rally then, and it will be a 14th place finish for Georgina Bentley and Damian Smith. Kay Thompson and Martin Young have a steady run to finish the day in 13th after briefly holding 12th earlier in the rally. Tom Delaney and Joe Cressenden were not having the best of luck in the afternoon stages. They spin the car on a couple of occasions, but luckily managed to escape with just time loss. No damage, they end the event in 12th. Tom Williams and Emma Morrison have a steady day getting used to the newly built car and set some promising times as well. They have a spin though and get stuck during the day, but an 11th place finish overall was good going. Jack Hartley and Martin Cressy meanwhile managed to gain some time in the final stages. They move up to round out our top 10. Not without its problems today, spinning the car as a number of others had too, but a 10th place finish on his first event was a great start to the season for Jack. Connor, O'Brien and Gareth Short are unable to gain any more time in these stages. They remain in that ninth place that they ended the last loop in. And Umberto, Aconero and Rob Gillam's trip here this weekend was met with an eighth place finish. A good result considering the car was a last minute replacement for his own after blowing the engine in testing in his original car the day prior to the rally. Will Butler and Tom Wood manage a place gained in the final stages to take home seventh place at round one. Tommy Meadows and Ian Oakey, meanwhile, overcome the earlier loss of time with a spin and keep setting some good times through the day to finish the event in sixth place. Ed Fossey and Sean Humphreys make their trip here worthwhile as they take away fifth in the opening round. Ed, one of many to benefit from having previous champion and current works driver Chris Ingram along to give advice at this weekend's event. There wouldn't be much change at the top of the results, with Matthew Davies and Mark Crisp finishing the event in that fourth place that they took earlier in the day. A good result for the pair, just one minute off the leaders. For Seb Perez and Philip Hall, it would end up being a close finish. They finished the event in third, but only just. The 
tie break on times mean they end the day on identical times to Davies, but win based on their performance in the opening stage. Zach Hughes and Chris Evans have a great weekend and a good start to the season as well, taking second place here at the first round. The pace was there all day, missing out by 30 seconds in the end, which means that it's a win for Charlie Barlow and Tom Hutchins. A recent test obviously paying off for Charlie. The pair led the event from the start, but there were a handful of drivers this weekend looking capable of victory. So this season was looking competitive, even at this first round. So at the end of the junior rally here at the Ross Kirk stages, Here's a reminder of the final results. In the senior rally, it will be an early lead for Martin Tinker and Stephen McNulty, a lead they held through the day's opening stages. Stewart and Louise Gilks would settle into an early second, 19 seconds off the lead after stage four, but gaining a few seconds back on the next few stages to lie just 13 seconds down after eight stages. Things will be nice and close for Howard Potter and Martin Haggard. They lie just a single second behind Gilks at this stage, leading the way in class three, two. Julian Jones and Mickey Herritz make a steady start to the event in fourth place, just seven seconds back from that crew ahead. Mike English and Andy Robinson unfortunately lose some time in the afternoon stages as they start the day off in third, only to drop to fifth by the end of stage eight. And it was a move the right way for Keith Douthwaite and Tony King moving just a small amount from seventh into sixth place, leading the way in class five at this stage. Barry Thompson and Jerry Hedrick make a similar move of the results from eighth into seventh, the pair lying second in class three at the moment. And Kevin Jones and Rosalind Goodall start the day 11th after stage four, and with some good times, the pair are able to gain a few places to move inside our top 10 now into eighth overall. There wouldn't be any such luck for Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler though, they start off well in fifth but over the next few stages, that would soon turn into ninth. And rounding out the top 10 were Nick and Heather Stamper, the pair lying second in class five and 10th overall after climbing a few places in the second loop of stages. In a few of the classes outside the top 10, it will be the class two lead for Ben Bloor and Alistair Hughes, but they would only have a one second lead in that class. And in class one, it will be Phil and Katie Sargent who come out on top at this stage. So a third of the way through this rally, the results are looking like this. On to the final stages then, and it will be 38th overall for Anna Stevenson and Robert Ginn, the pair ending the event third in class two. Luke Myers and Joshua Pullen end the event in 33rd place, an improvement on their seeding but they were some way off the class leaders as they finished third in class one. For Mark and Jake Livesey, it would be second in that class battle, an advantage in that place of almost a minute at the end of the rally. And Gareth Davies and Ken Corsi end the event in 30th overall. Their road rally spec car not really able to compete with the more expensive cars in the class, but that didn't stop them having some fun, taking budget rallying to the extreme this weekend by actually driving the car 80 miles each way to and from the rally. Just a place above the BMW were Phil and Katie Sargent, the micro pair having a good run to take the class one victory, a lead of almost 30 seconds at the end of the event. Dave Gatrix and Jordan Joins had a trouble-filled run this weekend, everything from a misfire to the driver's misuse of the handbrake. They eventually make it to the finish with 25th overall. In the class two battle, it will be second place for Steve and Dave Terry. The pair were close to the class lead all day and finished just 40 seconds down. Which means that it's a class two victory for Ben Bloor and Alistair Hughes. They held off the competition this weekend to take the win and 21st overall. Alex and Katie Willen get some reliability with the car this weekend. Despite some moments along the way, they end the event fifth in class three and 19th overall. For Jeff McQuilling and Stephen Land, it will be third in class three. They have a good run to take that position as well as 16th overall. And for Dale and Mark Carter, it will be 15th overall. The pair out in the new car this season and missing out on a top 10 finish with a few spins in the afternoon stages. The fight for class five would be a close one with John Darlington and Nigel Perkins coming out third in that class, missing out on second by only seven seconds. And in that second place were Nick and Heather Stamper the pair holding off third place Darlington and rounding out the top 10 overall as well. 
it will be ninth place for Mike Riley and Nick Goddard, sixth in class four. And for Barry Thompson and Jerry Hedrick, it will be the runner-up position in the class three battle, eighth on the leaderboard. Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler finished fifth in the well-represented class four battle, taking the focus to seventh overall in the process. And there'll be no change for Keith Douthwaite and Tony King. They continue their run to lie in sixth overall, taking the class five win. Sadly, it's a place lost in these final stages for Julian Jones and Mickey Herritz as they drop down to take fifth at the end of the event. And for Mike English and Andy Robinson, it will be a place gained, moving up to fourth and taking third in the class four fight. Onto the podium places then, and there will be a small amount of change as Stuart and Louise Gilks lose a place in these stages, dropping down to round off our podium in third. Their move down the results was to the benefit though of Howard Potter and Martin Haggett. They move up into second and of course take the class three win here today. So that means that it's the victory for Martin Tinker and Stephen McNulty. A lead they'd held all day and a win of just 21 seconds at the end of the event. So here's a reminder of the overall results. Stay tuned next here at Special Stage Extra for all the action from the Agbo stages.